Traditional Japanese music theory is indeed a very interesting topic. The problem is that it is an under-researched area, with only a few theories presently available. Before we get into this, it's important to note that what I present today is only a theory. For those who have studied Western music theory, you are well aware of the parallel octaves and fifths ban in four-part harmony. However, Bach himself wrote them 46 times in his chorales, consecutive fifths 36 times, and consecutive octaves 10 times. So just because something is a rule doesn't mean you can't break it. Learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist, as Picasso once said. Today, we will talk about Fumio Koizumi and his work unraveling the Japanese melodic construction in music, primarily from the Edo period. Fumio Koizumi was an ethnomusicologist who probably had to register for a few passports in his lifetime. He traveled to over 30 countries, studying their music and culture. Koizumi's most significant contribution was creating a system and explanation for Japanese traditional music and melodies. Let's go a little bit deeper. Koizumi believed that Japanese music, Nihon Ongaku, was created by only a few people and did not represent how Japanese people as a society composed music. His goal was to understand how Japanese people structured music by diving into folk and children's songs, a great ethnomusicological dissertation. Koizumi's approach was also unique in that his ethnomusicological approach involved constructing theories based on the observation of musical movements and functions rather than directly applying Chinese or Western music theories onto Japanese music. Let's get into some theory. According to Koizumi's work, Japanese melodies lack clearly defined intervals. Instead, they have easily movable notes and a central note that remains constant. Some music theorists like to call this the nuclear pitch, meaning the central pitch. As a shakuhachi player, and for those who play shakuhachi music, you are well aware of our central pits being re and ro on many pieces. So we have our basic central pitch. For this part of the theory, let's go and use the note a, or la, or chi for us shakuhachi players. With our pitch, we can now begin to talk about the two note modes. Japanese primitive music has melodies consisting of only two notes. One pitch is the nuclear, and the other one is an embellishment or movement away from home base. Some theories will call our pitch A a stopping tone, where a piece will inevitably end. There are four types of modes that exist. The first mode is called the yo mode, or the folk song mode. It is a major second interval going upwards to our stopping tone A. Altogether, we get the notes G and then A, or Sol, then La. The second mode is the In mode, or the Miyakobushi mode. Shakuhachi players will be most familiar with this mode. This starts a minor second above our stopping pitch and moves downwards back to the stopping pitch. Thus, we get the notes B flat and then A, or C, si, La. The third mode is also a Yo mode but the major st second starts above our stopping tone, giving us the Ritsu mode. Therefore, we get the note combination BA, Si La. The last of our four modes is the Ryukyu mode. This is a variation of the, of the In mode, where the minor second starts below the stopping tone A, giving us the note combination G sharp A. We are going to come back to our modes and build them up more in just a moment, but we need to stop for here for a second and talk more about the perfect fourth. The function of the perfect fourth. First, what is a perfect fourth? Well, according to the dictionary definition, the perfect fourth is a musical interval between two notes that have a frequency ratio of four to three. So an example of this would be the notes C and F or D to G. For the solfege masters, that is Do to Fa, Er, Re to Sol. Within Japanese musical pitch collections, each is built inside a perfect fourth. This is called a tetrachord. Within a tetrachord, the first and last notes form a perfect fourth, and between them, there will be one intermediate note. The total number of pitches is three, therefore it is called a tetrachord. So to put it into another verbiage, we now have ourselves a three note mode. The three note mode adds a note which forms the perfect fourth interval. Now, if you are familiar with Western music theory, you are aware of how powerful the 5-1 cadence is. Japanese music has something like this within the, within the scale relationship via interval, but 
However, there is no harmonic relationship to these scales, and it is important to remember that. The music will not function as Western music would. Let's take our four modes that we have established previously and build them up by adding the perfect fourth interval. Starting with our folk song mode, we have a G and an A. If we go back and create a perfect fourth relationship, we will add the note E below. So here is our new progression, E, G, A. Next in the Miyakobushi mode, we started with B flat and A. Add the perfect fourth and voila, D B flat, A. Shakachi players, is this starting to sound even more familiar? Okay, let's keep going. Ritsu mode. We had B and then A. Okay, add the fourth before that. Now we get D, B, A. Lastly, our Ryukyu Island mode. We can never forget Okinawa. We started with G sharp, A, add the fourth, and now we get ourselves E, G sharp, A. I teach a few Okinawan pieces to my students and I can already hear Azatoya Yunta. Now this leads us into finally the formation of our pentatonic scales. If we take the two instances of these same tetrachords or modes and stack them on top of each other, we form a pentatonic scale. Now this allows us to have two modal centers. Though we seemingly have a tonic dominant relationship as we would find in Western music, the music doesn't function this way. The notes can actually stop on either of the two pitches when we stack on two tetrachords together. This is because by building scales with two tetrachords, we in fact provide two stopping tones or two tonal centers. Time to go back to our scales and let's build them up. Let's build our first full pentatonic scale. We will connect them by doing something called jumping or connecting. Jumping and connecting refers to how the two tetrachords will relate to each other, creating an octave scale which can repeat. For these examples, we will have our modal centers as A and E, mostly. Folk song scale. Starting with the A, we will work our way upwards this time, and we get the following notes. A, C, D. Now jumping and connecting to E, we finish off with E, G, A. Now we have completed a Yol scale. In this one, even though we built it upon A and E, the stopping tones are actually A and D. This is why in some cases it is noticed that Japanese music adds a B to mimic the relationship that E has to D. E has a strong pull towards D, and in order to create a stronger pull to A, sometimes there appears a B. Here's what it sounds like in full. Now with the added B. Let's do the same thing with the Miyakobushi scale. Let's build this one from our two central pitches, A and E. Starting with A, let's walk up the scale. A, B flat, D, connect to E, then F, and lastly, returning to A. Now we have created the E scale. This mode is also peculiar because when it is played in its ascending version, it adds a G in replacing of the F. This is very similar to the adding of the note B in the previous Yo scale. When the scale is then presented descending, the G returns back to F. This is the scale that most shakachi music is loosely based on. Here's what it sounds like in its ascending and descending form. Next is our Ritsu scale. Starting from A once again and building off our two stopping pitches, A and E, we will get the following. A, B, D. Now jump to E, F sharp, and A. This one is also classified as a Yo mode. However, this one is used mostly for gagaku music, which comes from China. According to Koizumi, there, the three note modes are not used, and they will have their own music theory in handling of pitch and melody. Now, interestingly enough, if you lower the third pitch when descending, you also get the Ryo mode. So the scale we built is for ascending, Ritsu. Here is what it sounds like in its ascending, Ritsu, and descending, Ryo form.
According to the famous poet and Noel writer Zayami, quoting Han Shu, he has this to say about the difference between Ritsu and Ryo. The Ritsu scale is the voice of the male phoenix and is Yang. The Ryo scale is the voice of the female phoenix and is Yin. The Ritsu scale is the voice that descends from above and is inhaled breath. The Ryo scale is the voice that ascends from below and is the exhaled breath. The Ritsu scale emerging from the key, the Ryo scale, is the voice emerging from the breath. The Ritsu scale is being, the Ryo scale is nothingness. This probably means that the Ritsu scale is vertical and the Ryo scale is horizontal. Zayami, Performance Notes, page 121. Last is our DQ scale. Building our scale up once again with our stopping tones as A and E, we get A, C sharp, D. Jump to E, then get G sharp, and lastly A. In this scale as well, B is commonly added to create a strong pull towards A. This one has two stopping tones as A and D, even though we built the scale on two different tetrachords. The reason being is the relationship once again from E to D. It has a very strong pull towards D. There is a lot to talk about on why certain notes have more power than others in these scales, but it's a little more complicated to get into the physics on why it is so. For now, let's just jump in and listen to a few pieces of music. Now that we have our scales, let's look at a few pieces played on the shakuhachi. First, our folk music scale, Iyasaka Ondo. Iyasaka Ondo is one of the work songs in Nishimba in the age where herring fishing in Hokkaido flourished. Another popular work song is Soranbushi. The idea of a work song like Iyasaka Ondo or Soranbushi is to get everybody to work together and raise efficiency and power so that the work of two or three men becomes four and a half to five men. I hope you enjoy this tune. Miyako Bushi is our next scale, and we're going to be looking at the piece Kin Kira Kin. In this one, you'll be able to hear the difference of the raised interval, so keep an ear out for that. The piece Kin Kira Kin refers to textiles woven in with gold and silver thread. It's a very expensive fabric. In the Edo period, when a ban on luxury was initiated, wearing Kin Kira Kin, expensive silk clothes, was prohibited. Ordinary people had a strong antipathy against this law. So they satirized Heitan Zaemon Hori, chief retainer of the Kumamoto clan, calling him by his nickname, Gane Masadon, because he walked bow legged. This tune is filled with wonderful amounts of sarcasm. Our next scale is the Ritsu scale, and we will be featuring the piece Kimi ga Yo. Kimi ga Yo is the national anthem of Japan. The lyrics are actually from a waka poem by an unknown author from the Heian period. Enjoy Kimi ga Yo. The last tune we have is from the Ryukyu scale, 
and it is Asadoya Yunta or Asadoya Yunta. Asadoya Yunta originates from the Yaiyama Islands of Okinawa Prefecture in Japan. The lyrics to Asadoya Yunta originated from a story where a beautiful lady from Taketomi Island, known as Asatoya Kuyama, received a wedding proposal from a Dukuan government official who came from another island. Two versions of this story exist, one in which she marries him and one in which she does not marry him. This song also has a very strong anti-government motive behind it, and it was also a very popular tune within the Dukuan Islands all the way up until 1934. The piece's lyrics changed significantly once it made it to the mainland Japan in 1934, when Nippon Columbia created a Japanese-language version of it, retelling it more as a love song rather than Asadoya Kuyama's story. This video has served you well and you have gotten a grasp on the basics of Japanese scales. Until next time, see you then.